Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Instant Ramen Podcast. I'm your host, Chris, and with me this week is our good friend of the podcast, Kyle. Kyle, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, I'm kind of wrapped up here in a blanket in a chair. Feeling uh, cozy? Because I, I weigh like two pounds, so I don't have any body heat, so I, I'm always cold when it's in the winter. Dude, jaw, jaw don't feel. This week, we're doing Kyle's Trash Pile, or whatever the hell we call it. It's the only reason I'm here. Uh... We're going to be talking about Assassin's Pride in a little bit, but before then, let's just catch up. Do you want to ramble for like an hour and a half? Might as well. That's the thing that we do, so I'm down with it. I'm always down. Uh-huh. People know. The people know out there. They know, we got, they we got know a few shout outs. For. Yeah, we got some shout outs for the, the good babbling at the beginning. It's good times. Um, So it's been three-ish months, I think, since you've been on here last. A couple of things have happened. Not a lot. But what's what's new with you? I don't think that uh, your job situation existed until this point. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I work in an insurance company, and the agency I work, work at is closing. So that's going to be gone January 31st, and then I need to work somewhere else. It's crazy, though, because, like, the reason that that's happening is your employees, well, the your coworkers started going to different companies and then your branch was put under review and stuff and it's a new branch yeah it's more so the the agent it's more so that they didn't put in enough work yeah Yeah. so they like it was like they didn't like stick around enough and didn't do enough stuff i felt like they were like because they used to do they were a manager at a restaurant and that's Mm -hmm. like crazy so they, you know, get the job as an agent of a state farm. They're like, I can take it kind of easy. Yeah. Can't well, really no. It Just a very different kind of yeah. effort you got to yeah. put in. Yeah. So. But it's, you know, it's, it's whatever. Yeah. You're in a weird situation, though, where, like, you're at a crossroads where <laughs> it's been two of you in an office. Dude, it's the end of an era. And it's like, is it an end of an era? Is that what's happening? Well, you're know. trying to get out of insurance. So I guess that's kind of an end of an era, right? I'd like to, but it's looking like I may not get to. Yeah, well, you're trying to. I'd like to. Yeah. Wild, wild times. Honestly, you texted me the other day and you're like, what would you do <laughs> Oh yeah. if you were the only person in an office when there were supposed to be other people and like all this? Your manager is just... Uh, he's done. Somewhere. He's just somewhere yeah. else. I'm like working by myself all the time. It's in an office weird. meant for multiple people. I don't get it, man. Which crazy nor- work. which normally being by myself is awesome. I'd love to be by myself, but in a job meant for one person, not like four <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. And uh yeah, weird weird kind of tumultuous situation there. Yeah. But it's 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 rough on the stress and the anxiety, but, but we'll we'll chill out in a little bit here. Yeah. Also, uh you just had like a little mini food poisoning time. Yeah, I, I think it was the pizza. I mean, you had some if pizza it, didn't I had didn't pe- the I had like pizza at six o'clock, and then I had like some kind of food poisoning thing at like eleven or twelve at night. So I mean, it might have been lunch. Dude, that's the life. But yeah, it's up to like three. Oh but, man! But now you're not sick. No. I'm. I'm also not sick, but I was. Yeah, you just. So sound I sound like, like I sound like I'm sick. But it's just, it's pretend. It's just me getting over it. You're just doing a bit. Yeah, it's just a bit. I'll do it for like a week or two more maybe, and uh, then the bit will be over. It'll run its course. But for now, we're having fun. I'm having fun. Tomorrow, I'll be like, okay, Chris, it's not funny anymore. And you're like, still going though. Hey, man. You know what? Sometimes it comes back around. Still getting the laughs. You do it till it's funny, and then it stops being funny. And And then it comes back around. And you're like, oh my God, how is it funny again? So that's going to be me in this voice okay, going on. Okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I dope. expect. And uh, let's see. We've had a shit ton of holidays, so you've been doing lots of busy times. Yeah, with family here and also within driving distance. Yeah. It's just that to the other one and then back and then the, to the other one again. And it's like, all right, I'm kind of ready to be at my house by myself. And then when's the last time you went to Disneyland? The only reason I bring this up is because... Your family goes relatively frequently, like more frequent than any other friends that I know. Not 
la- not last December as in like a few weeks ago, but the December the before. Year before. That. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. So that was what you guys did instead of like a Christmas traditional thing. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. And this year you had a more tradition Krish. Oh yeah, tradition Krish. <laughs> how, how was that? Was it a chill time? Uh yeah, it was. That's what it was. It was chill. We just Good. didn't really do much, and I'm I'm always down for that. I'm not. Oh yeah, not the... trying to go hard on Crimbo. Yeah, thankfully, the family here in town. I think five people is like the most it gets to, mm-hmm. in in one in one building, and then in Folsom it's gets up to like seven or eight, but it's never like multiple family. Yeah, which I yeah. I can't do. They're tough, dude. Those big ones, they're they're tricky. I don't. I just I don't want to spend that much time around people that I don't see. Okay, so the whole thing with that is I I feel really similarly about that to where it's like I just want to spend it with the people that I like know and care about or whatever. Yeah. And there's also well, it's your family, so you should care about them. And I'm like, yeah, it's my family, but like. It's my family that I see at Christmas every year, and it's just like, hey, what's going on? All right, we don't really have many common interests nope. or anything? Cool. Well, you're just kind of a stranger to me. I mean, they are. Yeah. You're just like, all right, stranger, what's your year been? Okay, nothing's new, and I still don't. We're not connected. So, yeah, I feel you. Having those big family events, it's tough when you're not a very social, you're a little bit more introverted kind of person. You don't seek out that, oh, cool, new people, let's learn new stuff. It's like, no, I want to be comfortable. Well, yeah, all my cousins and um, my mom's sister and her kids, they're uh, like two years older than me and my sister, all three of them. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you should, you should come you should come to Denver and come, come visit and hang out. And I'm just like, no. Nah. The, the reason why is because they all have kids now. I don't like kids, dude. It's, you know... I can, it comes... I can take kids in, like, five-second intervals, and I'm like, all right, I'm done. Yeah, and those... they all have them. Little rascals get pretty intense pretty quickly. And, yeah, when you start getting those in the family... I've got lots of cousins with kids now, and I'm like, all right, well, y'all do your, like, little kid Christmas thing. You guys have fun getting together for that. But that sounds like a lot of work for me. So I'm, like, self-ostracizing. I don't know if you're... Oh, Chad, definitely feel. Okay, yeah. I just don't... I don't know, man. It's not for me. Kids are great. Nothing's wrong with kids. They're fucking fantastic little monsters, but I don't... I'm not around them all the time, and when... It's just... It's hard, man. You're mostly paying attention to the kids. Yeah. So you just have to go in for that. Yeah. I'm yeah. not usually into that. I'm not really usually in the socializing in general, so that's kind of my <laughs> my yeah. biggest thing. Then you know, plus if I'm if I'm going to Colorado, it's to hit up my boy Jake. Word up, Big J. Hey, what's up, Jakey? Still never met him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know who he is, honestly. Have you actually not met him before? I've met Jake. I, I was gonna say, I was like, <laughs> multiple there's, times. There's, like, there's no way you haven't. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's the funniest thing. Uh, your, your friend is going to live in my apartments. That's oh, pretty yeah. fucking Tony, wild. Tony and Sarah are going to live here. Shout out to Tony and Sarah. I was super excited to see his name pop up. I was like, oh shit, this is Tony? Yeah. Mr. Tony? Yeah, to- T-Diz. T-Diz and Lemon Melon. And, uh, yeah, and he's like, do you want to have like a, like a party when we move in or whatever to like celebrate? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. As long as it's, you know within our our hours where you could be a little bit louder i'm gonna get i'm know. gonna get loud to the point where you have to come over to tell us to shut up i'll be like ah. <laughs> so <laughs> real talk that little section the people that are moving out and he's moving in there have complained about the most noise complaints i've ever heard of and each time like they'll complain the security will go over there, like, the manager will go over there, and it keeps being like, what fucking noise? What are you talking about? Oh, we'll go to the apartment and be like, hey, um, we had a noise complaint, and they're like, me and my friend are hanging out, just watching TV. I don't know. It's like Did they ever the explain morning. what it was? Or there's like, there's noise. Yeah, they're like, they're throwing a party. You know, they would say that shit. <laughs> it's just like... 
All right, so that's a girl and her friend, and we know that they work at like a restaurant, get off really late, and <laughs> they're just hanging out. So I think any little bump in the night just wakes these people up. So anyways, if Tony's hanging out and there's all kinds of parties going on around him, whoops. <laughs> but she's never been throwing a party when we've been over there. So all right, I'll let him know. We'll see. <laughs> it's just, it's so weird. So anyways, if you're throwing a party, at least something will legit be happening. Yeah. For the first for time once. ever. Yeah. And but, then that girl that lives next door will be like, okay, now it's my turn. Yeah. You guys shut up. Yeah. 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 Then we'll yeah. flex on her really hard. <laughs> But um, every every New Year, I like to have people over now. Now that I've gotten to the point in my life where I've got good enough friends to do some chilling with. Uh, so this New Year, you came over, and we always get really loud. At least I feel like we yes. do. And no neighbors ever complain about it. I've always been like, hey, just as a heads up, I'm having some people over. Let us know if we're getting too loud. Like, if you could hear us at all. They're always like, nope, couldn't hear you at all. You guys are good. <laughs> okay. Dang. I know, right? So whenever there are noise complaints, it's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm hella loud. My friends are hella loud. No ish. No issues at all. Tell me none of the neighbors, for some reason, heard a, a synchronous one more time come from next door. <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly one of the best moments to me. It's New Year's Eve. We're all jamming. Don't know why the fuck this happened. But suddenly, all of us burst out. and Except singing, me. Except for you. And I think Tom, too, uh, starts singing One More Time by Daft Punk at different times. <laughs> so I was sitting in the middle of the like room. An ocean of madness. And everybody around me just... One, one more, more time. time. It, was, it was different we're words. Celebrate. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. It was just, terrifying. It's so fucking I'm funny. So scared. It was horrifying. I was laughing so hard. Don't know how it happened because it's not like we're all on the same page. Like, yeah, we're all gonna sing Daft Punk. No. This is the thing we're doing. No, it's a couple of people that I see like once a year. <laughs> They're Juan's friends. Uh, so shout outs to Josh and other Kyle. And then I, I feel like Tom and Diana, they're never in town. Tom wasn't seeing it because he was laughing so hard. Yeah. Diana was seeing it. <laughs> like, what's even happening? I don't see anyone ever. And suddenly we're all just on the same page, but a little bit off, which is exactly <laughs> where I love to be with my homies. Yeah. Yeah, it was absurd. Uh, fucking fun, though. <laughs> Played a lot of Jackbox. The newest Jackbox. For people out there, Jackbox 6. Uh, not that great. It's... It was fi- it was fine. It got the, I it, eh. a couple of things are fun. Yeah, I, and they're... I mean it's got the trivia murder again. I love which that is one. fun. It's good. Nothing's wrong with it. Nothing's wrong. I, it's a good time. It has like a version of werewolf that's like pushing a button and voting if people are aliens or humans. I didn't like that. Which I feel like it could have been better if we went into it a little bit differently, but it just wasn't great. It looked like it could be more fun, but it wasn't that fun. Dude, joke boat, get out of here. <sighs> the new game was not good. Uh, so we played some older Jackbox and had a lot of fun with those as well. Yeah. Just a good time. And <laughs> one of my favorite things is Fibbage, which is a game. It's a trivia game where it gives you a prompt and it like says, okay, and this like crazy thing is blank. And then you fill in the blank with a fake answer and you have to choose from everyone's fake answers and try to pick the real one and for some reason i get lucky and pick the real one like 80 percent of the time it's wild while having a realistic enough answer that like three people vote on it it's insane that game to me just i get so lucky with it yeah you're like you're like reed that's how reed plays games like that he always does like the try hard answer and yeah. then and then there's only two real sounding answers and so he just picks the one that he didn't because everyone's like Haha, poopy <laughs> butts yeah but then <laughs> the thing is sometimes the game it's like a 50 50 chance if the answer is going to be a poopy butts answer yeah or if it's going to be like 10 cattle <laughs> you're gonna be like okay well it's a statue of 10 cattle oh no it was a statue of poopy butts like who would have thought that's a crazy thing yeah it's a good one that's what it's i like one about of the best. Jackbox. it's wild but we had a good ass time playing that, and uh, we also got to try out the Mind, which is a card game 
where you're not allowed to talk to each other and you try to count it has cards from one to 100 and you try to count from the lowest number to the highest number in succession it's really fucking hard yeah and uh <laughs> people got really mad at juan really quickly and that's always funny to me <laughs> it is really funny whenever that happens i don't know why it's so funny but it's just hilarious so we're we're all trying to do it and we're waiting a long time just like i have no idea what's the other person gonna have and each time it happens juan has like the lower number by like six or eight or something and was like why the fuck didn't you put it down everyone was waiting for so long and he's just like i don't know it just didn't seem right well, which fu- is a legit way to feel about it yeah. too i mean it's funny because he has such like a like a like a gang up a bully attitude, yeah. but then it happens to him all the time, and he can't handle it. Well, that's the kind of the point is that he's constantly bullying other people, so then we all bully him. And the fact that it's multiple people bullying him, yeah, it's <laughs> it really just always funny. cracks me up. It's really funny. <laughs> it's so good, and uh, yeah, honestly, with the way that he is too, he's really gung ho about things. He's just like, "Fuck it, let's just go." So to see him hesitate was also really funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> just like, "What are you waiting for, dude?" <laughs> It was, yeah, that was a weird game, but it was funny. Uh, and did we, we also played uh, Keeping It Sexy. Yeah, we did play Keeping It Sexy with Kenny is, G. Yeah, it's the Kenny G card board game um, where you have to solve different everyday occurrences in Kenny G's life with some sweet sax solos. Can I, all right, I want to, <laughs> speaking of that game, I need to take a yeah. tangent. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to, a, a pre rant before my normal show rant. Why do people automatically... I don't, it's like a pet peeve of mine whenever you say something that somebody doesn't know of and their first reaction is to be negative about it. Like, I don't remember who I was talking to. So whoever you are, you're free from my wrath specifically. Um, <laughs> but I, so, I know what you're saying. So like, what did yeah. you do? We played ours. We did this. We played Jackbox. We drank a bunch. It was a really mm-hmm. good time. We had snacks. We tried to beat this really hard card game. And we played Keeping It Sexy with Kenny G. And they're like, what is that? I'm like, it's a it's a saxophone board game. And they're like, oh, what? I'm like, you don't what? you don't even know what it is. <laughs> Why is your first... Yeah. And your friend, who you talk to all the time, said, yeah, we did this thing that I had a lot... Of, and they're, your, your first thing is go, oh, wait, what? It, you had a fun time with this shitty thing that I don't know about? I don't know, man. I can't stand <laughs> that. It's weird. But the whole gist of keeping it sexy is you're solving these everyday occurrences with sax solos. So each person has cards that will have like a different sound effect of a saxophone uh-huh. with their wops and dupes and wah wah wahs And bops. Lots and of bops. Lots of bops. Lots of scoodlies. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a, it's a great game. And you chain them together and you make the internet come back up or you go to your dentist appointment or whatever the fuck they yeah, are. Yeah, it's like... They're like it's really like, stupid. Like, yeah, there's like whole bottle of chardonnay broke oh no B- bed isn't made Shit. Uh, subway went to one station too far it's like all these like <laughs> yeah. really minor things that you solve with you beautiful out, sax dude. music it's great and uh it's a cooperative game i always appreciate cooperative, I games. cooperative games it's really hard to find a good balance of like difficulty when it's a cooperative board game yeah and i can't tell since we only played one round and it's a four player game there were multiple people helping out too mm-hmm. couldn't tell if the difficulty was too easy or if there was a little bit of luck involved at the beginning which made the rest of it easy i think it was a mixture i think four people uh we were all working quite well together yeah we we're like you're like people were like reached like across the table like wait 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 don't play that yet i can play this with that and right? we can do that but it's also the first time that you've played it so to implement that kind of strategy and beat it on the first time seems like shouldn't they account for it to be a little bit harder i don't know i don't know if difficulty is the first thing on their minds when they made a kenny g oh, probably not game. but i'm just saying like it it's almost an amazing game. Instead, it's just a good game. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good game. I recommend anyone that wants to have a scoodly ass time, you get yourself Kenny G's Keeping It Sexy. Listen, all you listeners, when your friend who you enjoy talking to and spend a lot of time with mm-hmm. walks up to you and says they did a thing and you don't know what it is and they seem to be t- speaking positively. Oh, tell me more about it. Yeah, don't go, oh, what? Dude, did you just say you just got, like, way crunked up? What's that even... 
dude. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, that means that, like, me and my friends went out and we gave flowers to all the school children so that we can make their Ew, moms you happy. Did what? And, you know, Ugh. the homeless and, you know, with all the refugees and with the and so on. And like, you know, as so and such like is unto others that you Good. are, too. That's your lesson for today is don't just don't react negatively right off the bat for things. Don't do that. Unless it's uh, an anime, in which case you could do whatever you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... If your friend walks up and be like, hey, what up? I watched, uh, like, f- Flower of the Sun, the day Ew. we stood still when Ew. the dragons came. You'd be like, I, dude, I don't, I don't know what to say about it. Just tell me what it is and then I'll react. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, with the anime, it's really hard because they're just seeing certain things they're definitely preconceived notions and then oh, going yeah. into it oh yeah whole different beasts like seeing the first episode of assassin's pride for example you kind of know what's going on and by the end of it you're like mm, i'm more confused might... than when i started <laughs> yeah i think i might not have any idea what i was talking about when i looked at this for the first time yeah it's pretty crazy um especially that it became like by the end of the first episode, I'm like, I don't think this is going to be a good show. And then I hear things that are going on with the studio. And I'm like, Kyle's definitely going to report back on this one. <laughs> That's always the worst. Because like when you when like you and Juan are like, I don't know, I guess he'll watch this. You're like, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. But when, when one of you is like, you're definitely what I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, but <laughs> hey, man, that it's, it's got to happen. It's got to. Well, it's usually like I'll see people saying some shit and then... I'm like, oh, yeah, you got to do this. Juan's usually like, I don't know. This other one seemed worse. And I'm like, yeah, but you just got to pay attention to the news, man. Things fluctuate. Anime is crazy. You know, two weeks down the line, maybe the show's going to take a left turn. It's going to be a whole different thing. One of these days, I I don't know. We're like we're like six or six or seven into this, I think. I don't know how yeah. many I've done. There, there has to be one time. There has to be one time where I'm like, actually, this is pretty all right. I don't know, like, man. There's got to be a show that just has a, just a garbage intro or like a garbage first episode and then kind of like builds its way up. That's going to be a like really surprising feat if that happens. Because I feel like most things will show a little bit of merit before we give it to you. Yeah. You know? I mean, everyone listening will know if it's one of those times because the tone of my voice will be completely different. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, hey, yeah, we're going into a cool time right now. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty pretty whack. And then, uh, okay, so let's see. Pretty much you hung out with family. Things are good there. Your job's weird. Uh, we did some cool friend stuff. What other cool friend stuff and life things are you doing? Uh, well, as far as everybody knows, my the, the my identity is Dungeons & Dragons. That's the, type, yeah. that's the label you can put on me. Yeah. Um, Zach... One of the players in my current D and D campaign has decided he wants to try and be a dungeon master. Oh shit! Um, and Look so at him. he's working on a homebrew world, which is always impressive when someone jumps right to that instead of a uh, scenario. Yeah. Um, well, I think it also depends on like how you start out, and when he's starting out with something that you've created, he sees so much more potential in like right. a homebrew. Right. Yeah, I've imparted some things on him just because oh, yeah. that's his first experience. So he asked um, first Tony and Sarah because they haven't had to, they haven't gotten to be any part of any of our shenanigans yeah. yet uh, to play in it, and me as well, uh, partially because I probably never, because I never get to play, and the yeah. other half is probably because I can teach him how to do it while he's doing it. Oh, definitely. Um. So I'm excited to actually get to play. That'll be cool. That'll be. I'll have a good time with that. I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play a character with. Uh, well, secretly, he's gonna. Okay. He he has Wendigo psychosis. Okay. So he consumed, uh, the f- the flesh of another person a long time ago, and so he got possessed by a Wendigo, and so he's trying to run away from it. What's your, since it's a homebrew situation? What's the like, kind of class, it's based off of? He's gonna be a barbarian. Okay, so a barbarian. It's, it's Norse themed. He's going to be a Norse Viking ish themed character. Cool. I like it. So it'll be fun. I know you've played a barbarian in the past. Very long time ago. My second time playing Dungeons and Dragons. 
So it lasted like two sessions. <laughs> it's, <laughs> really? It's a it's an atypical barbarian. I'm going. I'm not going to be stupid or loud. Yeah. Or overly aggressive. Well, because last time I think your character like couldn't even talk. Uh no, he was illiterate and didn't understand math. That's so what like it was. whenever I got when I got like paid to do a quest, I didn't know like how much was what, so I just like took it. And I was like, thanks. And they're like, well, you have to pay for some of the damage you did because you broke our house while trying to kill a snake. And I was like, I don't know how much to give you. Yeah. Like, that's tough. Here's a couple of these. Yeah. Seems good. I don't know. So it's the, it's the, I'm using the class, but it doesn't define. Yeah. That's one of the things I always try to teach people who are getting into D&D. Your class doesn't define you in any capacity. No, yeah. Other than by what mechanics you get. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's why I say, like, if anybody in the game ever asks you like what you are don't be like i'm a ranger that's my job i'm a ranger Mm -hmm. no it's not you're a hero you're You're an adventurer yeah you're a shoe a a guy that used to own a shoe shop and then it burnt down right so i was cool stuff so that's just the class but he's just he's just a dude yeah trying to run from his literal and figurative demons definitely most definitely and uh you're also playing the 40k version of D and D. Very occasionally, we're playing a uh, Wrath and Glory. Yep. Um, Henry's brother Sam has been running that for us. He's also relatively new as a DM, so it's like once every four or five weeks. Uh, but that's fine. I kind of knew it was going to be like that from the get go. So it's not like, oh man, we're not doing it this week. Like, hey, when we do, we do it. Yeah. And the um, the 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 rp the role play if you will is so yeah. strong between us that like i'm fine with it being so few and far between because uh sam's friend and i mean my friend at this point brandon yeah. he's so good at like this kind of thing like he's be- like he's he's better than i am at it yeah it's, it's crazy i love it that's awesome he's like well yeah he wouldn't do that so i'm not gonna do that i'm like damn that's a, like a big decision it is. It's tough. So that's cool. Lots yeah. of cool D&D shit. Yeah. It's always my favorite shit. We just finished uh, Borderlands 3 recently. Yeah, we finished our first playthrough. So now we're just chomping through that second playthrough in True Vault Hunter. Yeah. Because we're getting geared up to do a raid. Yeah. Well, we played through it, and then we heard, hey, don't go to the True Vault Hunter until you do the raid. Yeah. But you need to be level 50 in order to do the raid. And we're like, okay, well, we might as well check it out. And yeah. hopefully we could do it. And then we definitely could not. Yeah, we didn't, <laughs> so, we didn't have the gear. And if we wanted to get the gear in the first playthrough, we just have to do, like, boring grind stuff. And then we realized, oh, we could also do less boring grind stuff. We can do that. annoying, <laughs> bad writing story stuff. But at least yeah. it's different than just fighting the same boss and respawning over and over. So it's it's been fun. I've been liking this second playthrough a lot. Yeah, um, we were just blasting through everything. <laughs> it's wild. True I mean, Vault Hunter mode's way harder. All right, we're almost halfway done. Oh, and there's the uh, boss, and he took three hits, and he's dead. And <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, we got lucky that I have a legendary uh, rocket launcher. That one shuts almost everything. Almost everything. It's insane. And then <laughs> as we keep going on, they're keeping like better and better small different things for us to check out and yeah. try. And it's cool. I'm excited. Finally got a new class mod so I can or a legendary class mod I should say. Took long enough. So now I can actually spec around something uh-huh. opposed to what I had before. And hopefully this is gonna be good. Um yeah, it's fun. I'm playing as the operative, you're playing as the siren. For Always. those of you that pay attention to Borderlands, that's kind of our sitch. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I. How far are we in the True Vault Hunter? Are we like halfway? We are or is it not going to Eden Six now? Which I feel like is the halfway point. Yeah, because then after Eden Six, we backtrack to do all of the vaults again. Because you have to. I don't even remember. The story sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Okay. Call them out. Yeah. No, the story's not too fantastic. Um, Except for the end credit song is great. Can you not ever <laughs> say shit like that? Represent my girl Alicia Keys. And then the the end theme for the the Borderlands DLC as well. The oh my god, <laughs> the handsome Jack Casino thing. Uh, who Just, wrote this stuff? It's weird because it feels like it's a joke, but it also is taking itself way too seriously. 
that it doubles back around and becomes serious. Yeah. Because there's... It, it feels a lot like how in Deadpool 2, they were able to get... Um, Celine Dion. Celine Dion, yeah, thank you. Yeah. To do uh, Rise from the Ashes or uh-huh. whatever, which was hilarious. It, it was, took us yeah. all seriously, but it also was joking the whole time. And I feel like Borderlands was like, dude, Wait. that was so good. Let's do that. And then they didn't make jokes while the song was going on. Yeah. So it was just like too, too earnest. <laughs> weird. I don't that was know. Weird. I don't weird. fucking know. It's a wild time. I uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the the shirt that I'm wearing, I got some uh, Christmas presents a little bit late. Mm-hmm. Can you can you tell what's special about this one? I can I can try to give you a hint. Um. So f- from what? F- so for all of the, for those of you who aren't watching on video right now. Yeah. For those of you that aren't Kyle, it looks like two eyes. Uh huh. And then it looks like two like. I like can't I can neither confirm nor th- deny that it has little stick legs and little pink feet. It's close, yeah. That's what it looks that's, like. That's pretty much what it is. But but the eyes are like binocular eyes, uh-huh. like they're like connected with a black line around in between them. So it's like kind of like Rob. But it's but not. But it's not. All right, I, I think I need a hint. Think about the colors as well. Is that a mustache? No. Okay. Are they glasses? No. I just finished a game today. Is it a Pokemon thing? It's oh, a, you got one of those. Is it a Tangela? It's a Tangela shirt. Yeah. Oh. It's super subtle and like you couldn't that, tell unless you knew. That, and I love that. Is that shit. one of those expensive shirts? Yeah. My dad got me a few Pokemon Dude, shirts. That's, oh, I want to see the other ones. Yeah. I'll show you the other ones later. I got a Rattata, a Dratini, and a Tangela, which are all really cool. And the Dratini is the most obvious, but it also looks pretty nice. The uh, the Rattata is like a pretty wild design. I'm really into it. It's like obnoxious, but not too obnoxious to where I couldn't wear it to work if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And this one's really subtle and kind of like dorky, and I yeah. like it. <laughs> Wait, I've been like noticing it all night. I'm like, have I seen this shirt before? Doop, doop, is... doop. And then if you would look behind you on the Monster Hunter layer of my figure case, uh-huh. you'll see a, a brand new figure of lily from pokemon that is a japan only figure that my dad somehow found for me okay which i am way into it lily and cosmog and uh yeah it's fucking it's one of the coolest figures that i have for sure all right everyone who's listening you're coming with me to come check this out here comes a noise bit (laughs) it's all the way over on the right the lily one the lily one okay i see it it looks really good uh it's one of the bigger figures i think yeah it's a bigger figure Oh, I see Cosmog now. Yeah, but why is it on out. Monster Hunter? Because they're pocket monsters, and you don't have any. Yes. Okay. No, I do have Pokemon down at the bottom, but honestly, the rearranging and putting down there was yeah. not worth it. Okay. <laughs> so I just didn't. Yeah, I, I feel I I kind of feel like it looks a little bit off in there, but it also looks a little bit off with the Monster Hunters. But then again, monsters, pocket monsters, yeah. fuck it, Lily, Lily's like Pokemon God or whatever. I so don't, she could take I don't care know of about it. that. All right, all right, buddy, we're coming back. We're coming back. For the Make most sure part, not hitting anything. For the okay. most part, nobody could hear anything, so that was pretty good. Yeah, I'm a professional. Yeah, you are. Um. There, there hasn't been a whole lot of anime in your life, I don't think, outside of what we've been watching no, together. No, no solo shows currently, other than the trash. To be honest, um, the you you've said I probably wouldn't like it, um, but the ReZero director's cut started. Yeah, I'm and gonna I kind of want to watch it. Okay, because I was gonna try it again this time. So we'll watch it together. All right. I'm not watching any solo (laughs) stuff. No, you're not. Because I know it started, and that was something that I was going to talk about uh, on our, hey, these are the new shows that are out kind Mm -hmm. of episode. Um, It's out again. We've already... We've already experienced it a little bit and decided it wasn't for us. Mm -hmm. I think Juan watched two or three episodes, and so did I, and it just... It didn't land, and I tried it multiple times, but now... That I've watched way too much fucking anime. Yeah. And I could handle all kinds of different shit. Maybe I'll go into this with a little bit more optimism. Maybe it'll be a good time. Who knows? Yeah, and maybe so. I'll enjoy any of it. Or maybe, <laughs> most importantly, maybe I'll get some ideas. Yeah, 
that's most of what we're looking for ideas. I don't I don't think you're gonna find many from that. No. Um, from the sounds of it, it yeah. Who knows? I don't get very it's much. Cool. Um, I don't get very much writing inspiration from anime. It's true. Anime, for the most part, is very formulaic, and then they have more character-driven stuff than world-building things. So it's always cool to see an anime, anime with a lot of world-building, which I'm excited to hear about the world-building in Assassin's Pride. Because when I'm I excited first... to hear about it, too. Is there any? <laughs> when I first started, I'm like, okay, these people live in domes, and there's apparently some like weird monster magic shit going on. We'll find out more. And I feel like they completely didn't give a fuck. And they didn't continue on with it. So I'm really excited to yeah. hear about that. When I actually start talking about it, ask me about the domes again. I will ask you about the domes again. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> no solo anime on your end. Not really much that I have to report on because we're going to be doing our wrap-up um, next week for the episode. But I have been still watching March Comes In Like a Lion, and now I'm on the uh, second core of the first season because i think it was 24 and then 24 and or 22 and 22 or something like that anyways i'm enjoying it it's really good um it looks really good it's it's a slower show um it has some good emotional moments but i feel like there are a lot of points where you i don't know the character has a lot of depression. He has some anger issues. He has a lot of pent up emotions. He doesn't communicate them well. And every once in a while, he like wells up and he like yells and screams and then he runs out of energy and then he falls over. And I feel like that's the part that's not realistic to me is being in public mm-hmm. and then kind of like collapsing to yourself because you're crying and screaming about something just for like a second and then you fall didn't really land for me in the same way that uh other emotional moments have worked their way into like what i like with other anime Uh but it's a really good looking show and it has some really good characters and i do want to see more but those moments aren't hitting me as hard as i think the show expects them to which is kind of a bummer because i'm going into it with a really open mind right i don't know it's pretty um it's good I'm going to keep watching it. But at this point into it, I think it's not going to be one of those shows that I'm head over heels over like some other people are. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it has a really good art style. It's got great characters. It looks good. If you're considering checking it out, it's 100% worth checking out. But it doesn't hit that same level of other kind of slice of life drama type shows. So, Speaking of solo anime, Will, since you you and... Juan mm-hmm. are all about the news and knowing what's going on. Yeah. Will you tell me if another season of uh, My Two Guilty Pleasures comes out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you guess both of them? Uh, Live-In Girlfriend Show. Whatever that one was fucking Domestic called. Domestic Girlfriend. That's, uh-huh. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty good, good with that one, right? And what's the other one? Uh, quintessential uh, Dumbasses. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Well, I don't remember the name of it, but... Quintuplets. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quintessential quintuplets yeah there is gonna be a second season of that one i know oh, yeah, there for, has to be i know that they're talk i think i've read something about that i don't know mm-hmm. and then domestic girlfriend i haven't heard anything about for a while but yeah i'll keep you in the loop Dude, both of, of those shows every episode i'm like why am i still watching this these are great nobody knows nobody knows you're just into it for some reason yeah and that's fine that's all good i mean i, I was watching that harm a couple of weeks ago and uh it was fine. Which it was one? all right. White album. What was that? Uh, oh yeah, the Christmas one. You were <laughs> yeah. telling me yeah, Christmas. Or there was Christmas at some point. There was Christmas, which was a large plot point, and somebody had that. it on some kind of a Christmas list. And I was like, "Huh, seems okay. Seems like something different. Okay, Christmas romance. Let's do that." And then it was mostly just a harm that Christmas was happening. <laughs> yeah, you told. I remember now. And at the same time, what was it that I'm fucking watching? I don't remember what I'm watching, but Christmas was also a theme of an anime that I'm currently watching or finished or something. I don't remember. Christmas with the Cranks. That's exactly what it was. With Tim Uh, Allen, Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't fucking remember. It's... It doesn't matter. That's the point. It doesn't, doesn't fucking matter. Who cares? I don't. Honestly, who the fuck cares? I don't fucking. I don't care about anything. 
You want to talk about the news? Because I don't have... Yeah, you said you had a little bit. <laughs> I don't have anything good to tell you about, but I sure do have some pieces of news. So, this is the news, everyone. Higurashi no Nako Koroni, When They Cry, is going to receive a new anime project from Studio Passion. Akio Watanabe is going to be the character designer. Um, people seem to be kind of excited about this. I don't know why but i'm excited to find out why they are excited what about you that was a sentence <sighs> sure was <laughs> i don't care yeah okay me either uh mahoka season two is gonna air summer of 2020 so when i looked at the uh the picture i thought maybe it would jot my memory but it honestly looks like a bunch of pretty generic looking anime characters possibly space related I don't know. Does it look familiar to you? Uh, no. <laughs> but it feels like it could be. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a worse version of the Astra Lost in Space one. Sure. Or like one where somebody dies, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's got so the, I don't know about it's it. It's got but... the color filtering of someone who dies. Yeah. And they look a little bit sassy and sad, so, yeah. yeah. Don't know what it is, but Mahoka fans rejoice season two on the way, summer 2020. We did it, guys. Finally, Studio Ghibli confirmed it's working on two new films. Uh, so, at some point, those are going to come out. I don't know when. What I don't a know surprise if... <laughs> that they're making more things. Wow, who would have thought that one of the biggest studios to ever exist in anime is still churning them out, dog? Yeah, so that's that's my my big news for you. I have a fourth huh? piece of news. You son of a bitch! What is it? Uh, the guy who made Doki Doki Literature Club tweeted out that he is making additional content for Doki Doki Literature Club, and re he's starting to work on again his original visual novel idea that he benched to make Doki Doki. Pretty cool. There's some kind of anime news. Yeah, it's some kind of anime news. Um, yeah, I Weed remember. News. I remember hearing that he was working on something else for Doki Doki, which I thought was really interesting, considering it's been two, three years now. Yeah, it's crazy. Two years, right? It's been years. Two years. It's been more than one years. Yeah, it's a wild, super cool, cool stuff. Yeah, Kyle. Why don't you tell me a little bit about Assassin's Pride? And while you are telling me about Assassin's Pride, I'm going to tell you what studio made Assassin's Pride. If That's you a good just, idea. Yeah. Give so, me a minute. so we open up with a pointless uh, shot establishing main character uh, fighting bad guy, and bad guy gets away and somebody dies. Mm -hmm. so establishing that this the, the the good guy main character is some kind of fight guy he's some yes. kind of fight badass good. okay good that's all we needed now f first actual shot uh we are met with uh kufa vampire v-a-m-p-i-r uh -huh. So immediately both of us were like oh fuck i wonder what this guy's deal is gonna be he's a vampire there's no and I was really excited for him to meet, like, another character named, like, like Gina Werewolf. Well, didn't it start with, like, a cool siege sequence? Weren't they doing, like, a raid on some, like, office? And then the, the sneaky man jumped out the window after killing a few policemen? Yeah, with his bandages? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the establishing shot of, of Mr. Vampire being good at fight, but yeah. not good enough to beat bandage. Yeah, so EMT Squared is the studio, and at this point, I was like, I might fuck with this show. We yeah, got some cool stuff. Yeah, we almost stuff. fucked with the show, but then there was a very specific point where we no longer fucked with the show. And we would never, But we're not ever. there yet. So he's on his way to his job, as he's like, I'm going to be an instructor, and he's walking, and he's in a giant dome city, and... uh and <laughs> you don't nothing exasperating has happened yet kyle you don't have to act ex exasperated you telling me about that, it you telling me that kufa vampire is not exasperating no it's dorky but we haven't been proved that it's exasperating so yet. he meets meets girl girl character who's probably mm -hmm. like his age 
And she's like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to the school. And she's like, well, that's pretty cool. Let's go on the train together. And she's nice and he's nice. And he's a, 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 a dapper gentleman. And then they get off the train. He's like, okay, bye. I'm going a different way. And she's like, okay, bye. You were really nice. And leaves. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets to the he gets to the school at which he's going to be teaching. Biggest surprise in anime history. The school is a magic fighting school for little girls. You know, big surprise. Huge shocker. And the little ass girl gets up on the balcony like, I'm going to jump on bow on the balcony. And she falls off and he catches her and she's immediately smitten by this old ass man. Dog, all I'm saying is if I fall off of a balcony and some other fucker catches me... I might catch some feels. I don't know, man. I guess you're right. So the, the theme of the show is that this assassin, Mr. Vampire, as we'll call him, uh-huh. uh, is sent to kill this girl of a, like a knight, of a knight duke house, as they're called. Yes. Because I don't, I don't think they actually go over why he's sent to kill her. I don't think they ever revisit it at any it's point. It's because that's his mission, Kyle. That's his fucking mission, okay? He wasn't actually supposed to be a teacher. That was just his way in. I suspect it's because she doesn't have mana, <gasps> as it's called. All the girls at the school have mana. It's like, it's like fucking my hero. He, he, she's Deku. She doesn't have a quirk. And everybody thinks she's dumb yeah, because she doesn't have one, even though she's part of one of the most important knight duke houses of the city. And so maybe he's there to kill her because she's worthless. I don't know, because she's making the knight duke house look bad or something. I'm All actually right. sure they mentioned it at some point. I just wasn't looking at that particular second. Because let's be honest, I don't actually look at the screen 100% of the time I'm watching these. Like, you can be honest. I think that that's what most people do when they're watching things is uh-huh. that... They're also sidetracked by a second screen. I think a study came out recently that said that like 95% of people do that. I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't really matter what's up there all the time. Sometimes it's like a visual masterpiece and you're like, yeah, don't fucking miss it. It's a silent voice, but also respond to that text, dude. That's important. Go for it. Yeah. And so, and then one night she's sad and alone and gets attacked by jack-o'-lantern spooky ghouls for some reason and then he saves her with with his samurai sword yeah and she's like wow thanks teacher guy and he's like no problem do you want to have mana and she's like i i mean yeah and he more goes, than anything he goes, in the world he goes, all right but this is gonna kill you or something <laughs> and he gives her a smooch him right on the lips little last girl and then she falls asleep kills her falls asleep wakes up she's got mana <gasps> Wow, she's a she's a samurai class. All of a sudden, this is where we find out that they have classes. Cause yeah, who doesn't? Who, <laughs> I'm sitting here like, what? Who doesn't love that about anime? It's fun, you know. There are different tiers and different systems, and you know, it's just like in checkers. When you get a new check on your check, then you get a double deck, and then you're just fucking slamming, right? Uh huh. So she just like checked herself. And now she's going to wreck some motherfuckers. And now she's... Du- I don't want to say she's double-decked. That sounds wrong. Yeah, she's double-decked. How old is she? 13? 13. You said 13? Yeah, she's double-decked by that so, age. Yeah. So she's a samurai, and that, that becomes a problem because the samurai is not one of the classes of that house. So then everyone's like, how did she get the powers? Did her mom have an affair? And she, now she's even worse. And then she has her best friend from childhood that's a paladin and that's what class she was supposed to be oh man but she jumps straight to samurai she that's crazy straight to samurai respect in a heartbeat uh, she sounds like tom cruise to me and you know you got some good classes you got maiden and juggler uh-huh. and dia diala oh yeah because they can't say yeah. it right Diablo. Um, um, and Dragoon and all those. Because yeah. you got to put classes on things every goddamn time. It's not a video game, but you got to put got to put classes. I mean, I've watched Final Fantasy XV Brotherhood. I think I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they didn't even mention classes. So it's kind of like a school anime in that she's just trying to get better at being a fight. Also, she's in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she's also in love with her teacher. Ah, oh, fuck. So, I hate when that happens. Been there, though. So I had a huge problem with the show. 
at first, it's going to get downgraded to a really big problem. So okay. it's starting as a huge problem. So it's a huge problem. Yeah. Um, she appears to be, acts like, and is shown to be a little ass girl. Yeah. Not like eight years old little ass but no but like junior high school or l- like around yeah there maybe and f- with his with the with the guy's accolades and how yeah. he acts and he he's appears, like a professional assassin he's a professional shit. assassin he appears to be around 20 or older i would say older and so at this point i'm like this is not okay because he is he does not lean away from the affection. He's like, nah, you're my little lady. Yeah. Hell man. yeah. He's just trying to get yeah. that MF motherfucking hog cranked. Oh, you know? he's trying to crank that hog. Yeah. And so the whole show, I'm like, this makes me really uncomfortable. I don't know why. And uh, and then it got downgraded to not really a problem because I Googled it. And I was like, yeah, she's like 15 and he's like 17. I'm like, okay, that's not so bad. Yeah. And then it went back up to a really big problem within the last (gasps) episode. They said she's 13 and he's 17. I'm like, I mean like, okay, so first off four years isn't a big deal, but But it's a big deal when you're almost 18 and they're 13 years old. Exactly. It's very similar to a, uh, a smarter child dating a dumb adult oh really yeah it's like (laughs) those are the levels i don't know man it's just one of those things it's like japan stop please don't please don't do that you know on the on the topic of japan stop please don't do that i recently found something out about japan that's in that realm so uh, a lot of people maybe a lot of people don't know but japan has a pretty big problem with people taking uh, pictures of girls on trains yes. and uh, like upskirt pictures mm-hmm. so you have to on phones and cameras and stuff it has to make a camera sound right that's like a law over there well apparently <laughs> this is a weird fucked up but cool that it works but also like i don't know kind of thing where they've been finding ways to prevent that problem by girls are wearing badges that say like please don't take pictures and like please don't harass me or whatever right but the thing's crazy about it is that it's working and for some reason that is making these creepy fucked up men respect that and give them some space but they need to say it which is something that shouldn't happen you shouldn't need to say don't touch me but it's working isn't that fucking Japan. <laughs> why Nobody knows why. Why man. Japan? It's fucking. Fuck. It's weird. Japan's got some fucked up weird things, but thank God they found something that somehow is working. They're like, we are a very respectful people. Okay. If you ask me not, if you ask me <laughs> not to, I will not. But if you don't say anything, I'm going to assume it's fine. Yeah, I'm for sure grabbing your ass unless you have something that says don't. Unless <laughs> so you have a name tag that says hi, my name is blank. And then underneath it, it says, I'm a new employee at Home Depot. Please don't harass me. So fucked up. So yeah, these uh, these girls are now wearing badges on their way to school and stuff right. in order to prevent that. So I want one. <laughs> yeah, you do? Yeah. I don't think no you're one will gonna... harass me. Oh, a badge, not a schoolgirl. I was going to say no one would harass me if I had a schoolgirl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? Our country apparently has a lot of people that are... Uh, in powerful positions that don't give a fuck about that so that's true who knows man the world's fucked up is what this anime is about it's about how fucked up and it's so fucked up that they live in domes and right bring up the domes again tell me what's going on so they don't explicitly tell you but the domes are because everything outside of them is like evil zone because we find out that the backstory of Mr. Vampire. They don't, and normally I I make fun of and get mad at a lot of exposition, but then sometimes you kind of need it. And yeah. then they go the full opposite and just show a scene of something happening. You're like, wait, how did, well, wait, how did we get here? Because, you know, there's the giant spider demon. Uh, yes. That, that, that killed his sister. Of course. And he has vampire powers now you could just assume as a little kid he's like four years old and he's got vampire powers and then the the leader of the assassin agency kills the spider demon and and is like wow little kid you have powers i'll save your life if you join the assassin committee 
By the way, he's not a vampire. He's a lycanthrope. I was hoping you would bring this up. Of course. Uh, so he's fighting this guy uh, to protect his little lady. Who, it's Bandages Man again. He's back. Yeah. And for some reason, because you remember in the first episode, he was like, he was pretty, he was pretty menacing and villainous. Yeah. He gets downgraded to like, I'm the bad guy. I'm going to be bad. Shame. And then. Big shame, dude. And he's going to beat our best boy and best boy's hair gets white and grows longer and his eyes get kind of narrow where like the pupils get tall and narrow. Oh. And then he gets really good at using the sword more so than he was. And he beats the guy and he goes, Whoa. And then he shifts back before his little lady can see him like that. Okay. Because of how grotesque it is for him to get sexier. Wait, it's not a secret. Like these people exist, and people know that lycanthropes exist and stuff. It no, it looks, it seems to be a secret. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, and so the, it's, it's kind of episodic slice of life almost because there's not really an overarching plot, but it's like an overarching plot. Like there's three episodes of one plot, and there's three episodes of another plot, and there's three episodes of another plot. Yeah, and it's just him teaching her. And then her encountering some kind of issue, like the first one is Vince Bandages guy, and the second plot is she has to do some battle royale thing against other girls from the school to prove she's good enough for her dad. And then the third one is some guys creating fake lycanthropes to revive his wife, but he's killing people. Yeah. And then the fourth one is some other Knight Duke house is like, She's not a real samurai. How'd she get her powers? Kiss. Apparently, yeah, I mean, literally, yeah. It's a big kiss, man. And then, so, is we, we cut back to girl that he saw in the first episode. She's actually one of the other instructors at the school. She's the instructor of the girl's best friend from childhood. And, okay, yeah. And she's just kind of like sassy pink-haired girl for a while. And then during one of the episodes, she's like, Mr. Vampire, you got to come with me to my hometown because my dad's trying to get me to marry someone, but I need you to pretend you're my boyfriend so I don't have to marry this guy. And he's like, yeah, okay. I don't have any emotions because I'm an assassin. I'm cool. Yeah, man. I'm so fucking cool. He's got to be cool. And so they go to this other homeland together. A little girl's jealous because they're acting like they're married or whatever. And then halfway through, the pink haired girl's like, man, this is actually all right. We could actually do this for real. He's like, nah. No. And then they fight, and they realize they find Spider Demon again. He's still alive. And so they fight Spider Demon. And it turns out pink haired girl's also a lycanthrope. But she's been suppressing it for six years. And it turns out it's because Mr. Vampire was suppressing it for her because it's actually his sister, the one that got killed by the Spider Demon in the, 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 pre thing that i talked uh-huh. about yeah but, but then he sealed it away so she wouldn't have to know she was a vampire or, well, like nice. or whatever yeah and so she's like oh my gosh it's it's been so long since i've seen you it's nice to see you. and he goes boop and suppresses her memories instantly again <laughs> like, what a nice brother she was like i just want to be your sister no i make the decision and then turns her back into not his sister again which is weird <laughs> But it's it was all for the reason that he wants her to be able to live in society without yeah. being persecuted, which when she turns into a lycanthrope, part of her hair turns white and she gets narrower eyes. That's the length of the transformation. Which yeah, if apparent- somebody looked like that around town, I would be like, oh, they got a style. Yeah. And like, and, you know, we even get to the point where the girl, the little one, 13, bitch. Uh, <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> Uh, she sees him in that form and she's like, oh my gosh, is that you teacher? He goes, yeah, it's me. I'm the ugly vampire lycanthrope or whatever. He's just sexier at this point. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to take away your memories. And she's like, Boop. but what if I like you just like this? And he's like, what <laughs> you do? And I'm like, all right. He hardly <laughs> even looks different. Guys. He looks just cool. He kind of looks cooler. And she's like, yeah, yeah, you're like the best senpai-san, Oni-chan. 
She doesn't say that. Um, no, but she, she thunk it. She though. thunk she it. She thunk she it. She thunk it for sure. She was thinking. Um, and he's like, okay, I guess you could know. Uh, even though he fucking auto shuts his sister down, he's like, bah, no chance. Yeah, seriously. Uh, the animation was all right. But yeah. then it got really bad. Uh-huh. But it didn't get really bad until the last episode. Oh, the so last they... episode was like, holy shit, dude. There's like, the eyes are different sizes. The mouths aren't moving with the bodies. <sighs> it was crazy how bad it was. Like, I was like, Wh- what? You guys, this is what we've been waiting for. We're just waiting for each season. There's an anime that's like, loses all right, funding. You know, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> people are like, yo, what the fuck are you guys doing? This sucks. Bye. This isn't the trash anime podcast anymore. This is the run out of funding anime podcast. It's fun. Uh, it's, it's different. It was and crazy. It, you know, every time you see it, you're like, yeah, I understand why this would happen. <laughs> like For all shows, yeah, I get this. So overall, the quality stayed consistent until the very last episode where it was in the trash can all right well because in the first episode it didn't look that bad it was never really that bad they obviously strayed away from kind of doing too cool of things just Mm because they clearly wouldn't animate it oh yeah sure but like it wasn't really like stand aside like worse than anything i'd ever seen until the last episode well that's good i guess (laughs) Is it? I don't know. You've been describing the show as grooming the show just because it seems like he's so much older. And then she very clearly does seem like she's 13. Yeah. And that that, that was my issue. Because like at first I was like, he's way older. This is disgusting. And now it's just like, this, is, this isn't this is a good thing. Yeah. But he's like, he's, 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 full, he's fully for it. Like this person That's fucking, is yeah. not formed emotionally intelligently or physically but i'm all for it you know in junior high there would always be those girls that are like edgier or whatever uh-huh. and they would fall for some like street rat who's like actually homeless you're just and talking just... about aladdin that's not that's not <laughs> no. that's not junior high chris that's aladdin well, what 13 year old like little punk ass nerd is trying to get together with aladdin Princess Jasmine. She was a thirteen-year-old punk-ass nerd. She was like fourteen. I don't. I don't know the canon of it, but I do know that she was like. We're a putting lot up a straw poll uh, for to say whether she's thirteen or fourteen. You guys can <laughs> vote for it right now. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, but my point is, like, there are those girls in junior high yeah. that look for the like sketchy older dudes that they date so that they could seem more mature. Uh-huh. And this. Uh, this show's not helping that case at all. No, it's not. It's like, that's just fucked up. And of course, as in all animes have to do, one of the 13-year-olds, they're like, dude, you're 13? How you got bops that big girl? And she's like, don't look. And they're like, girl, I want to squeeze them. Because that's what, <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. And she's like, no. I'm like, all right, guys, come on, stop. But she's 13, so she's got to have them squeezed. It's just, that's the rules, dog. Yeah, when you got bops, you got to squeeze them, I guess. Them's is the rules. Them's is the breaks. It was, that's a, rough. It was, it was bad. It's, yeah. it's just, again, it's, it's just what, I don't get it. It's, it's, there's so many tropes that are across all of these shows that I'm watching. You, I mean, obviously, what always when it comes down to like, the gender, the sexual aspect, or the romantic aspect, it's always like, what? Why is that, like, a thing for you to want to put in there? Yeah. And then, of course, is, as is custom, if it's a Crunchyroll show, I always look at the comments on the final episode, <laughs> and the first See comment... who else went on this journey and, with you? And the first comment, it was, a, it was wild, because the first comment was like, why is this show so good? And then I was like, oh, God. But then everyone after this is like, what? Why the fuck did I watch it up till this point? This is trash. <laughs> and someone else was like, I don't know why I watched this. Is I must like trash. And then someone else was like, did they not put any money in this last episode? <laughs> so the first one was like, dog, this show's my fucking jam. And then everyone else was like, I don't, I don't know why I'm still here. 
It's yeah, no, it's always weird because there are people that are really enthusiastic about these things. I mean, as we know, people have called you out on it for not liking uh poorly animated almost nonsensical type of show. Yeah. That apparently has a huge cult following. Like there are always people that love that shit even if it is one of the lowest rated and least watched shows. You're going to have some really volatile fans out there that are in major support. Yeah. And it's fucking weird. So, hey, but you know what? That's fine. Those of you those of you out there that liked Assassin's Pride that you just you you watch that show and you're like God damn, why couldn't I have been the teacher to a small girl that fell in love with me? And I say to you, and I go, you know what? You can watch that show, and that's okay. You can be trash, but only in the safety of your own home, and you don't ever leave. You just stay there. Just keep, stay there. I'm putting, like, a big piece of furniture in front of your front door so you can't leave. Although most doors open inwards. It's, don't worry about it's it. going to be so big, though, that you can't move it. So yeah. you just stay in your house and watch the show, and there's like 18 refrigerators piled up in front of your door. Yeah. And you can't yeah. leave. Yep. It's fucked up. Thank you for sharing your uh, thoughts and uh, time with us. I have a question for you, actually. Okay. Do Do you and Juan ever, like, get upset and rant about a show you didn't like? Like, I know you guys, like, will watch a Netflix movie or, like, watch an anime movie. And then you have an entire episode dedicated to talking about it. Yeah. But do you ever get upset? So, um, Juan caught me off guard in our best of the decade episode because I thought it was going to be a positive best. Hey, guys, look at all this. It has the word best in it. Yeah. Well, it's our like favorite is what we were doing. Uh-huh. So, our favorite anime and favorite this, favorite that. Uh, then he's like... Hey man, what was the worst moment in anime at the last decade? And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, catching me off guard. And Juan's had a thing for a long time uh, about Attack on Titan, where he will never let the grudge go. That they went on hiatus for like four or five years and then came back. And I don't know why he's got a, a big old fucking mood about that because they came back and they came back strong, but they they came back different. Uh huh. Anyways. That's his biggest gripe, and he brings it up relatively frequently anytime Attack on Titans brought up, even though he fucking loves it. And he he went so far to say that it's one of the best, and it shouldn't even count in the top ten because it's better than that. Then he also brought up that that was fucked up. Oh. And he brings that up all the time. Okay. For me, Black Clover... I talked the most about Black Clover, and that's uh-huh. what I said in the episode as well, is that they said that they would be 50 episodes. I tried to stake it out. I could not. The animation wasn't great. The characters weren't great. There were a lot of cool things that they tried to do, and it just didn't have enough there. It just started feeling worse and worse the more that it went on. And that's, that's that makes it. makes sense. What? What were you looking for? What do you think? I don't know. I was just wondering if you guys ever got like upset about any of the animes you watched. I don't anything. think I get upset, really. But then again, there aren't like a whole lot that I put a lot of effort into and don't get much out of. A personal gripe of mine is I wish I could like your lie in April. Uh-huh. And I can't. It's impossible for I've me. I've heard you say that multiple times. It's just not for me. Um... Kate actually started watching it, even though I've told her about it and whatnot. And we've talked a little bit about that. She's like, so I started watching Your Lie in April. And I'm like, okay, cool. I hope you like it. And she's like, so I've stopped watching Your Lie in April. And I'm like, uh-huh. And she's the kind of person that watches so much fucking anime, dude. Um, fucking, was it all of Fairy Tale? Yeah, all of Fairy Tale. It's crazy. She started watching it again, too. <laughs> Is that the third time? second second time okay but anyways uh your lion april i want to like it a lot i can't and that's the one thing that like disappoints me most is that it feels dishonest when i'm watching your lion april like all the moments that they want to hit you with that like emotional moment Mm -hmm. uh they want to hit you with that like connection that friendship that relationship between these characters uh it doesn't feel like something that would really happen. It oh. doesn't feel like okay. the characters would interact with each other in the ways that they do. 
like you know that this dude like your best friend since childhood maybe not best friend but your friend since childhood has been like abused he's had a shitty life he's really unhappy you wouldn't treat him the way that you do in the show if it was a real life situation yeah it would be like a lot more like hey man like doing okay like you want to do this you like doing that right instead of being like we're doing this thing that you hate doing it would be like are you are you comfortable with this yeah just checking in because you know you have a very difficult situation all the time are you gonna be okay if we do this thing it's okay japan doesn't usually understand how to handle emotional situations yeah so uh okay i mean that's a good answer that's yeah your lion april is the most disappointing show i've ever watched and i've tried watching it multiple times because people say it's so emotional and it's so good and it's like it has a lot of those things that i would like but it just doesn't feel like these are things that real people would do and it doesn't feel genuine at all but it also doesn't feel fantastical it's in this weird suspended area to where it just feels fake and like it's trying to get a reaction yeah okay that makes sense yeah so that's my my biggest okay gripe with any anime did you guys hear how upset he got i guess (laughs) <laughs> chris is fucking pissed I'm fucking pissed you guys oh speaking of pissed i shared uh on <laughs> yeah i shared on twitter that more and more frequently in games i'm calling enemies that shoot projectiles and stuff piss piss boys. Boys. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, piss yeah, boys. yeah big piss boy moments right <laughs> so everybody some, knows a piss boy when they see one some people get it you know some people are out there and they're they're liking that i'm talking about piss boys you know but then <laughs> i think it was uh yes yeah it was yesterday at work the painter that plays borderlands 3 that we've kind of been talking about things and he's going to be doing uh the raid on his first playthrough and not a second anyways he said he was playing it with uh one of our maintenance guys Uh and the maintenance guy was calling the last boss which is watan or something like that Uh oh oh man wanton's here (laughs) right and he's like yeah he's freaking weird when he plays he's like oh wonton's here we gotta kill wonton I'm like oh yeah and i'm like good yes yeah, <laughs> that's the point i didn't tell him i'm like you'd fucking hate playing games with me <laughs> like what the fuck people are weird about things and i take everything to another level of strangeness mm-hmm. so if you feel uncomfortable weird about things definitely not worth playing games with oh me. boy here comes old big cringus bringus yeah no you don't want any of that I mean, just today, I woke Juan up talking about slathering oil on my, my schlong. I think that was olive the deal. Olive oil, Yeah, olive oil. Because, uh... Gotta slime up that jam. Sierra got a, a choice voicemail at work talking about fapping or something like that. <laughs> I don't think she got to hear the whole thing, but no. she definitely heard that fapping was mentioned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and she's like, I guess that makes sense, because, like, they could use olive oil as a lubricant. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, y- y'all just slather up your schlong with a little bit of olive oil. That's, like, go-to. you got to season your meat, you know? And then Juan's like, good morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also said Juan doesn't get out of bed unless he slimes up that package. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's what got him out of bed, you know? <laughs> the whole morning I've been sending him memes and he's not saying anything. And then I'm like, you know, you got to season your meat. And then he's like, yep, I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready for seasoning. I am now here with that you had me at that it was so fucking good and eliza's like guys i was in a meeting with my boss why are you checking your phone that's the thing she's always like i always got in so much trouble today because i checked my phone because you guys were texting me it's like well then just stop checking your phone if you're in these situations with your boss the president of croatia was in my office and i checked my phone and you guys were talking about pooping on butts and i just lost it yeah and that's the way it goes that's just what you expect with us um so thank you guys for listening. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I have a... Honestly, though, uh, I don't have much more to say about anything this week, but next week we're going to be doing our season wrap-up, and Kyle and I just finished watching all of the like arcs of the season mm-hmm. of different shows. Uh, My Hero Academia was the last one that aired. Don't know where we're at with Stars Align, honestly. I don't know. Thought there would be the last episode, if but not, it's not there yet. More power so. to it. We'll fucking see. Maybe that'll just be an extra little thing. I'll, I'll still put it in my summary because I've watched everything. But uh, how do you feel, like, since people aren't going to be able to hear your opinion on it, how do you I'm feel sure about this? I'm sure they just need to know. <laughs> they got to know. Since we're always giving you things to be negative about, 
tell tell us some positives. Give us a little preview for next uh, next week's episode. What were your opinions on the shows we watched? First, I gotta go over what we watched. We All right, watched, so my hero. Um, we obviously watched my hero. Um, I mean, I like my hero. Yeah. Um, there were some really slamming episodes, um, but some really boring and bad ones too. The pacing was weird for this season. Personally, so far, this season is my least favorite. And we'll get into why next next week. Uh huh. But I mean, I wasn't too fond fond of the first season with him crying the whole time. Yeah, and no that's one fair. doing anything cool for the first season. Yeah, I just, I just like the potential of the world mostly in the first. You know. Yeah, it's fun to see new world building, especially like superheroes, and you're like, okay, that's not exciting. This guy shoots tape, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I can get on this girl with slimes, that. but it's acid, and also she looks weird. That's what I liked about the, the, the world initially was like, all right, everyone's got superheroes. Yeah. Also, everyone's weird as fuck. Yeah, you're like, okay, so that guy's name is Cement Toss, and he's a giant fucking slab of cement. Yeah. That guy's made out of trees. That man's a fire hydrant. And there's some things that just have nothing to do with their powers. Like, this man looks like a shark. His power is gun. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. So, I mean, this season, yeah, it was really not, um, what's the word, consistent. Mm-hmm. There was like two, like two or three slammers, and then the rest of it's like, eh. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I still like the show. Um, there's, some, you know, it's always got good potential. I'm glad I've stuck along for the ride for it. Yeah, man. Um, Stars Align was not what I expected in any capacity. I was like, I'm I mean, ready for like a low. I'm ready for a <laughs> low key, high Q. Yeah, uh, but the end of the first episode kind of told you what it was going to oh, be, right? Have Have you? Have you ever explained to the listeners of of the Batman, the I Bat guy? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So you tell them. So I've there. It's this. It's a character that I've that I've workshopped. Mm-hmm. Um, that there's some animes where there is a Bat guy in them. It's not yeah. like a bat, as in like the flying thing. It's a it's a man holding like a baseball bat, and he's waiting around a corner to hit you when you come around the corner. So there's these animes. How 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 spoiler light are we on these things? I mean, we're going to go light right now. Okay, so Stars Align is like a nice boys playing sports anime. You're yeah. like, okay, yeah, nice boys playing sports. It's not an exciting sport by any means, but the animation's good, and they got good chemistry, and there's mm-hmm. some, and some, you know, we got some gay, and that's always great. Yeah. Um, I feel like the gay was handled really well in this And then show. just like the end of the, the just the end of the first episode, Bat Guy, boom. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this show sure is nice. And then the first episode ends and it was like the after credits part. Yeah. And the the show just fucking hits you in the face with a bat with something really like serious and dark. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. And that's man. what the whole show was. You're like, yeah. man, this is not. Wait, where is he? Where's the guy? Where like, he's going to show up? Every one or two episodes, you would get a new, hey, this is the fucked up situation. Yeah. And I and I love that. Yeah, it's great. It kept you kind of intrigued to learn more about these characters and see the depth that they have. And from, from the get-go, you knew that each character had their own personality. Yeah. But you couldn't really tell what it was yet. So. Yeah, I did really like that it went kind of the realistic Japanese char- characters. Like, I a lot of times I was like, "Wait, which one is this? Mm-hmm. The one with the black hair? Wait, that's all of them?" I can appreciate that too. Yeah, yeah. So it was it mattered that their uh, um, personalities and home lives were different than just being like, "I'm purple guy that's tall. I'm I'm white hair guy from Russia or France." Yeah, man. Uh, it's good to have that variant. So, so that show that was, was good. Stuff. I liked Stars Align. Um, Vinland Saga was great. Yeah, I love that it ended with the end of the prologue. <laughs> I think that's still one of the favorite that was moments good. in anime. Yeah, but yeah, that's, really good show. That show had potentially one of my favorite anime characters of all time. Oh yeah, Asklad had so much going on. So cool. It's really, really well written. Yeah. Didn't expect him to be from the, the no. start, and he just improved and improved. So uh, last season we were talking about the show a little bit more. Um, and he was, he was the primary villain and we got to see some other characters here and there, Yeah. but this whole season was a lot more politically driven Mm -hmm. and I loved it. Or I guess it's not really part of the season. This is just like, or it's not a new season. It's a continuation of the season rather. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great character. Yeah. He drove the whole show for me. Great show. Everyone else I was like, eh. Show me I, more. Show me more about this boy yeah, right here. Who gives a fuck about the main character? Let's see some ass glad. Yeah, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. So that was that was great. Um, what else did we watch? Kimono Michi. 
or Kimono oh, Wrestler. Oh, Animal Wrestling? Yep. Uh, I'm honestly kind of surprised we watched the whole thing. You know, it it got significantly less funny uh, near the end. After the fourth episode, they just kept doing the same joke over and over and over. Well, same jokes. Yeah. Over and over and over. They didn't come up with any new jokes. Uh-uh. Some of them kind of remained funny, like... Uh, I liked the sword grab joke. That yeah, was always sword good grab for me. joke was good. I always liked seeing the ant. Just whenever the ant's ant was always on the good. Screen. Oh yeah. Um, but I honestly wouldn't suggest it to anybody. No. Um, yeah, and we'll get into more about that next week. But definitely, it started uh, funnier than it ended because they focused on characters. Uh, they were introducing characters, and they focused on expanding that character. And in those episodes where they were expanding on them. It didn't add anything, no. which is kind of a shame. I think that, and the, the other thing was, is there were few and far between, like scenes of like really cool wrestling animations. Like those were like whoa, like yeah. doing like some crazy fun. wrestling. Because I, I, I like wrestling stuff. It's cool. And, yeah, I and think in at an this anime point, environment, a lot of people do. In an anime environment, that's like where it can be its coolest. But then yeah. they just didn't do it enough. Like in the last episode, when he finally fights against the guy. Yeah the like they didn't really it was just a bunch of freeze framing but like right at the end when it did like full animations of them doing moves I'm like whoa this is really cool and that really bummed me out because i would like to see a show that's just like really cool uh a top tier fight animes yeah yeah like the two that that one guy mentioned i don't remember assassin's pride no okay well i don't know so um it was at anime expo yeah um <laughs> King and Ashura yeah. is Baki the Grappler. And yeah, that Baki the Grappler. Fucking and... something else. I don't know. Yeah. So I'd like to see a cool fight anime that's not two frames per second CG. Like a fully, like a good animation wrestling anime would be really cool. Yeah, it would be. Um, and that's really kind of all we watched, isn't it? Uh, Maybe, so yeah. That's my opinion of the anime. There watched. wasn't a lot of anime this season. It was no. a, it was a pretty dry anime season uh, as far as you go. But it's fine because usually, cause we usually kind of struggle to get through all the animes we have. But there was a mm-hmm. low amount of anime so we could watch um, all the way through Silicon Valley. And, yeah, we finished that. Um, and and His, His Dark, Dark Materials, Materials, which was sweet. Joyous. It was popping. It was a good time. Dude, it was. That jalapeno was popping. Yeah, man. There's this last season of anime didn't accomplish a whole lot, no. um, which is fine. You don't always need a bombastic season, but no. the fact that there were still a uh, good three shows to commit to, right, was cool. Yeah. Well, only like one of them is a new one that you really liked. If I really liked, I mean, That's enjoyed. True. Yeah, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so you know, whatever. But yeah, man, this uh, this last season of anime has been wild. Assassin's Pride, bottom of the barrel. Oh yeah. Do you think one of the other ones could have been worse? I don't remember what was out there. Uh, there was the one where there was like the the fuck mountain. The other uh, the other one you guys were considering was the guy who's supposedly really ugly and ogreish, but then he was gonna get power by having sex with women. Yeah, that's. The I fuck feel mountain like one. that would have been like. I just feel like that was exactly what it said it was. It was, and there's a diff because because watching shows like that and like some of the shows that I have watched where it's like the theme of it is like like sexual humor or just sexual in nature. Yeah, there's still like you know that part like inside me that's like, yeah, all right, this is what we're in for. I'm like, no, it's not, Kyle. That's not what we're in for. But that's what you're in for. Yeah, because because I'm a person. Yeah. So like, but like a show about some fucking guy some nobody having sex to power up you know there's that part of me that's like i wish that was me <laughs> yeah even though i'm like no I, i'm like no i don't no but if you could crank that mf motherfucking if I could hog crank my the motherfucking fuck hog all the time but but assassin's pride there's no part of that there's where no it's like cranking there's no part like yeah i wish that could be me there's no, no. part so yeah. the, so i would say that that is just universally worse and a uh, sex power show never ran out of funding. So you tell me what show's worse. I don't know. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess it's Assassin's Pride if you're making me choose. Yes, correct. Good. You've chosen correctly. I'm glad that you watched it then. 
Anything you want to say? Any parting words? Uh, yeah, we'll have a. I have a. We'll have a special surprise for everybody once when, when I'm back in here. We're gonna have a special episode. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it'll be a secret. Uh, oh. And then. And then. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. 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 And then we'll. Uh, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for listening, for joining us, for uh, letting Kyle vent about his struggles <laughs> that you choose to do. I just want to make that clear as this well. This was my idea. Yeah. Because um, somebody, it, my new coworker asked, why do you do this? Why do you like, force me to <laughs> yeah. do this? And I'm like, no, no, no. Here's the thing. Most anime is terrible. And if we wanted to find the, the cream of the of crap the cream. pile. Cream yeah. of the cram. <laughs> cream of the cram. Uh, and yeah, you were always entertained seeing like, well, there's some bad shows. How the fuck are these made? And you're like, who are these made for? And we're like, I don't know. Watch the worst ones and try to tell us, try to figure it out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you were, you were way into that. You wanted to do it. And we said, yeah, please, if you do, you could be on the podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't wait till I meet like one person that has watched all of the shows that I've watched and loves all of them. And I'll be like, it's you, you whose name is Prampston. Oh. Prampston, you watching all these shows. You're the person they make them for. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, would you want to talk to them and like, would you want to pick their brain and like figure out who they are? Um, I would, or would you avoid them at all no costs? matter no matter what i would initially try and then i would gauge their personality and the way they talked immediately and that would decipher whether or not i would want to keep going like if they're one of those people that you're just like oh my fuck oh no then i'd be like all right i don't want to talk about this anymore but if they're yeah. like i think it's you know it's just because you know this i'm like okay uh-huh i still don't agree with you but okay all right depends on how they act well, we'll find out one day. When we meet Prampston. Prampston, if you're out there, just send us an email. We'll get you guys in touch. We'll send each other's contact info. Yeah, dude, hit me with those digs. Yeah, man, those fat digs. Uh, speaking about contact info, if you like our logo, check out Turvy Tops on TurvyTops.com. She does all kinds of great art. I'm way into her style. Uh, and then if you like our theme song, check out Tom Nasser on SoundCloud and YouTube. Uh, that's Nasser N A S R, and Kyle. Where could people find us? You don't have to do it. <laughs> I, I mean, I forget every time. I know you're on. Uh, it's fine. I know you're on Instagram. Yeah, look up Instagram podcast on Instagram. Same thing goes for Facebook, and uh, you could tweet at us at Instant Ramen Pod. Podcast didn't fit. There, that, at least you got that one right. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've heard Juan say it a thousand times. <laughs> you could shoot us an email at at gmail dot com. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Kyle's Trash Corner. Or whatever we call it. I never remember. I mean, it's different every time. It's more it like, matter. it's kind of like a, it's a trash dome tonight. Tonight is a trash dome. Very mm -hmm. themed. Uh, next week we are doing our wrap up of fall 2019. And then the week after, hopefully we'll be doing our summary of winter 2020. Hey, Kyle. Don't forget. Uh, 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 j j just, just add, just add, uh, add hot water. <laughs>